Good morning and welcome to Central Baptist Church Service Online. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. If it's your first time, welcome. Welcome to Central Baptist Church. This is a wonderful church, even though we're not meeting right now, it is the best church that I've ever been a part of. And I'm just so glad that you're with us. If it's your first time, I'm Dorcas Wattis, the First Lady, and my husband is the Pastor Gerald Wattis. So thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. Centro Children's Church was amazing, as always. Thank you so much, parents, for sending your children to Children's Church. Please always ask them, what did they learn today? Because we do teach them the Word of God. We teach them principles to live by and um, always check in with them and make sure that they're paying attention and that they're listening. But thank you so much for sending your children to Children's Church. If you have an announcement, please contact the church office and leave your uh, information and your name and a phone number so that we will be able to get back in touch with you. So thank you so much for leaving those um, clear messages. And if no one gets in touch with you, please call back again and leave a message. Thank you so much. Also, Central, we just want to thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your, um, we just want to say thank you. Pastor would like to say thank you for all of the love gifts that you've been giving. His birthday was on the 18th of May, but it's not too late to celebrate his 60th birthday. Um, you can do it the, for the rest of the month. So it's not too late. Go ahead and be a blessing to your pastor for turning 60 on May 18th. So God bless you and God keep you for everything that you've showered him with so far. Um, if it's your birthday today, happy birthday. And if it's your anniversary, happy anniversary. If it's your first time with us and you would like to sow a seed into this ministry, there are several ways that you can do that. You can drop it off here at our church at the address that you see on the screen. You can mail it to that address also. You can text to CBC Carson to 77977, or you can go to our website and give securely online. But thank you so much for being a blessing to us. Just as I'm sure that we are a blessing to you. So thank you, everyone, Central. We always tell you thank you. And to our guests, if you choose us to give to, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Central, uh, every time I run into someone, they ask me, when is the church opening? I think they think that I have some inside information. I don't. So the church will open when it opens. As soon as the Lord tells our pastor a date, we will be back together. But he hasn't told me anything. So I know some of you want to get the secret out of me, but I don't know. So as soon as God says open, I'm sure Pastor Wattis will say we're opening and we will let you know. So God bless you. Please, please, please continue to pray, pray, pray that we will do things in God's timing. So thank you so much for all of your prayers, all of your support. We do miss you. We do look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. God keep you. And we will see you next week if the Lord says the same. All right, stand to your feet. Here we go.
Good morning, everyone. It's, I'm so thankful to have you join us in our online worship service this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for uh, each and every one of you joining us. And I just want to just uh, ask you to continue. Please continue. Thank you so much for your gifts, first of all, uh, your gifts of giving. And please continue to give to support this ministry so that we can continue to do kingdom work. So thank you so much. And keep us in prayer as well as we go forward in doing God's work. I want to just say to you that this pandemic we're in, this shall pass. As I always say, this too shall pass. We'll get by it. We'll be back together one day soon and we'll be rejoicing again and we'll be back to business as normal, worshiping and assembling together. So with that said, we're going to get into worship and the word right now. So uh, I just want to feast your eyes, your attention. First, let's look to the Lord before we go any further. Let's ask the Lord to come into this. So let us pray. Father God, we humbly come before you right now in the name of thy son, Jesus. Thanking you, O God, for this opportunity that we could stand and that I can preach the word to your people. Now, Father, I ask that you would just uh, uh, help me to decrease as you increase in me through the power of the Holy Spirit, that I may speak your words to your people that I may bring forth a powerful word that will help someone today. So I thank you in advance, O oh God, for what you're going to do as we honor you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we ask it all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, follow me over. We're going to go over to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Just two verses of scripture. And the text reads, For the weapons of warfare, of our warfare rather, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I want to just title this message simply, Cast Out Negative Thoughts. Cast Out Negative Thoughts. Uh, here in these passages of Scripture, uh, here in these passages of Scripture, the Apostle Paul uh, uh, is encouraging these Corinthian believers to resist these false teachers that were causing all kind of problems in Corinth that had uh, 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 founded, uh, that he had founded rather in Corinth. What was happening there, just to give you, just a, a, a you know, exact, or, or, uh, bring you up to date with this, what was happening in Corinth was these false teachers were stirring up a division and causing many of these believers to resist Paul's teaching as well as even his authority. So the Apostle Paul eventually challenged these rebels as well as the, 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 the false teachers. And so, so the Apostle Paul was telling these Corinthian believers, uh, 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 was telling these Corinthian believers that the weapons of war were, that they're fighting are not even of this world, but they're powered by God, effective at tearing down strongholds that are built up against the truth. So Paul was saying, in other words, folks are demolishing, uh, uh, demolishing arguments and ideas and every high mighty philosophy that goes against the knowledge of God. And what we're doing is, is, is we're taking captive, this is us, the believers, we're taking captive the uh, 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 prisoners, or prisoner if you will, every single thought every single emotion, and then we're subduing them into the obedience of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, Paul says, cast out the negative thoughts. That's what he's saying. So I want to do what I always do. I want to hit you with three points, or three ways, rather, to cast out negative thoughts. The first way to cast out these negative thoughts is to pull down strongholds pull down strongholds. And we just like Paul uh, are, are, are just mere weak human folks. And when we, uh, 
when we finally, when we really understand it, the stronghold starting point is in the mind. And the thing that we must do is to break down these spiritual battles that's happening inside our minds. Our battle is not planned according to the way that uh, the old world fights. Our battle is not that way, no. Earthly schemes are not our concern. Our power comes directly from God, come from God alone, folks. We need to understand that from God. We don't have the power. We're weak when it comes to us doing it by ourselves. We need God's power. And God has a way of breaking down these walls or strongholds, if you will, that set themselves up against the knowledge of God. But first, we must understand what strongholds are. Strongholds are anything that are arguments, philosophies, reasonings, schemes, or whatever that's of this world. The pretensions have to do with anything proud, man-centered, and self-confident. That's what those are. And what we got to do is understand this. We got to understand, and just let me give you a better idea rather. We are to take every single thought that is not godly, take it captive, and then we have to make it obedient to Jesus Christ. If it's not right with what God's word says, then it should not be all right with us. And if we're wearing God's armor, his spiritual armor that is, and we're carrying God's spiritual weapons, then baby, we are set out to conquer the world for Christ because we're doing it in the weakness of us, but with the power of God. But remember, remember, we will find obstacles on our journey as we go out. The enemy, our adversary, has built up these strongly fortified evil troops to resist the truth and attempt to block God's plan, mainly of redemption. So what's going on is there's a wall of human reasoning that is reinforced with slight and subtle arguments and pretense of logic, that is, with flaming battles, and I mean flaming battles, and we, are, and we need to defend, we need to defend uh, uh, things with the power of God. We can't do it on our own. And these logics and all these battles we're defending, it could be lust, greed, pleasure, all these things are in that little ball of, 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 of stuff that's flaming. And the whole, and it's a whole bunch is loaded with a lot of pride. That human heart sits, uh, sits right there waiting as the rebels uh, go at these things and in all our thoughts rather. So folks, listen. Uh, when we talk about strongholds, these strongholds, and they have been around for thousands of years, it's nothing new. This is not anything new that we can look at. All these walls that we, that we resist, that these walls resist, excuse me, they resist the truth. And however, however, we have help readily available. We have help, which leads to my second point, second point in casting negative thoughts out. The second thing we must do before we even do any battle, we need to put on God's armor. Put on God's armor. Ephesians 6, 13 through 18, very familiar verses of scripture. We quote it a lot all the time. And Apostle Paul says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about, with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all power and supplication in the spirit and watching thereto with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. Paul is simply telling us here, the Apostle Paul here in these passages of Scripture is telling us why we need to be suited and booted up in God's armor from head to toe. Not just head down the waist, head to toe. And he gave us the list of God's armor that we are to wear. Paul tells us, 
to put on every single piece of God's armor so that we can trust and resist, resist uh, the, uh, the evil one and all these evil days we're in right now to be able to fully hold our ground is what he's saying. Then Paul names all the pieces of armor. He says that all the pieces of spiritual armor, that is. He says, put on that belt, which is needed for truth, which we know, we know Satan is a liar and he fights with lies and enjoys twisting a lie to sound like the truth. And we as believers have God's truth, his word, which Jesus demonstrated in Matthew chapter four when he sent, when uh, he was sent uh, out to, and Satan sent Satan fleeing rather. And then we got to look at the next piece of armor, which is that breastplate, the breastplate, which is needed for righteousness, righteousness. We know, we know often attacks our heart. We need that breastplate to protect our heart from all these wicked emotions, the place where the emotions are resting rather, our self-worth, our trust, so God's righteousness is what protects our hearts and guarantees our approval. God loves us and he proved it when he sent his son to die for each and every one of us. And the third piece we need to get, get on is get them shoes on. We need to get shod up the shoes, which we need the shoes to wear with a readiness to go spread the good news everywhere. Forget what Satan does. He gets in the way, keep going, push on through it. Satan will lie to us to keep us from sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, trying to make us think that it's useless. Nobody wants to hear you. Nobody wants to listen to that stuff to remove our motivation, but keep sharing the good news. And the fourth piece of armor is the shield. The shield. We need it because it represents faith. Faith, knowing that we don't have to see it, we just do it. Satan likes to attack in a, a form of insults, setbacks, luring temptations. The shield will protect us from Satan's fiery darts that he likes to throw at us. But we see from God's perspective. We look past the circumstances knowing that Jesus already won the battle for us. And then we need that helmet. Get that helmet on. We need it because it represents salvation. Satan wants to put, uh, put into our hearts doubt. I don't know if I'm saved. I might not be. I did this. I did that. God don't save us to take it back. Our salvation is what we need. The helmet is what protects our minds from doubting God's saving work for us. And then we need the sword. The sword. We need the sword because it represents the word of God. Again, just like Jesus did in Matthew 4 when he was tempted. Jesus quoted scripture, word of God, and Satan fled. When we are tempted, we know that God's word can sustain us. It will sustain us all through any, anything that may come at us. Listen, folks, this armor of God's is what we need while we are here in this battle to pull down those strongholds, all those, uh, uh, all the armor of God is what helps us to keep moving, keep pressing toward the mark. Like Paul said, I press on to the mark of the high calling. When we're choosing to use God's weapons, we are attacking the strongholds by the miraculous power of Jesus Christ. We can preach, we can breach those walls and take them down. We can pull those walls down, pull those strongholds down. All the sins and, and error that are battered, that we can batter down. As a matter of fact, I remember back in the 80s, this heavy duty tank of some kind, back in the 80s rather, that LAPD had called the batter ram. When LAPD needed to gain access to a structure, they would bring this big monster of a machine, they'd bring it out, and guess what? When that thing fired up and it went in, it battered it down and it took whatever was down to gain access. And guess what? They made it in. And the same thing with us, with the power of God, it's like that batter ram, only a zillion times stronger. It will batter anything that Satan tried to put in our way. We know that the armor of God will help us uh, uh, overcome any obstacles. Listen, folks, 
We are victorious Christians. We can batter down walls and all those strongholds. We are to stand like victorious Christian folks. But you don't have to, but if you, you, you got to put on the armor of God in order to pull down strongholds. Our thoughts can uh, be bigger, can, be, uh, can beat any wall that Satan puts out there. If we got the helmet on, every th piece of armor that God gives us, we can batter it. We can take it because we have the power of the Holy Spirit to be victorious. Jesus already won the victory. All we've got to do is follow suit and follow what he wants us to do. Many times we think of ourselves uh, out here just doing it all alone, but if we got the Holy Spirit's power, we can overcome any battle, any battle that is. We sometimes think, uh, I, I would do it uh, like that, and then here comes the word. Here comes a word meaning, but we need to keep that word out of there. I would love to do something, but don't we get messed up with that word, but somebody going to block something? We all can get blocked with that word, but that's Satan getting past the helmet. If you ain't got the helmet on, he's going to keep that butt in there. That, but I can't do it. But we need to take the butt out and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what we need to say. And I would do such and such, but I might not do well. Wow. We allow Satan to keep us from uh, uh, succeeding and pressing out. I remember Peter when he was on the boat with the other 11. And when Peter was on that boat, he yelled out to Jesus, Hey, Jesus, if that's you bid me to come out. Jesus said, come. Peter was the only one that stepped out. Even though he sank, he called on Jesus. But look at the other 11 just sitting back watching. The fact is, is that we've got to be willing to step out and keep moving. Do it. We can do it with faith by pulling down these strongholds, holes rather with God's stuff. We can't lose. The mind, I heard this saying, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And it's a terrible thing to waste on Satan. You can't lose, can't let those negative thoughts uh, take you out. Put on the whole armor of God to defeat the enemy from invading our mind, invading our heart. Get those shoes and get ready to run. The whole armor of God is what we need in defeating this battle. Moving on to my third way to cast out negative thoughts is this. Take thoughts captive to obey Jesus. Take thoughts captive to obey Jesus. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we read that and it says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, Paul is simply telling us that we are to take prisoner every single thought and every single emotion and subdue it, subdue those thoughts into the obedience of Christ Jesus. If it's not Christ, subdue that thought Pull it down, take that thought captive, and then subdue it to the obedience of Christ. Listen, folks, we all, all of us know that there are a lot of human thoughts that need to be taken captive. We got all this stuff running through our mind all the time. And if we are totally honest, we all have some pretty jacked up thoughts that we need to take prisoner take captive and then uh, pull them down and cast them down and turn and turn those jacked up thoughts into uh, uh, subjecting them into Christ, to the obedience of Jesus Christ. See, listen, folks, we are to demolish, and I love that word, demolish arguments and every pretension, meaning claim that something that's claiming to something that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And then we are supposed to take every one of those thoughts captive, take them prisoner, meaning grab hold of them and say, you're not going to mess up my mind. And then we need to say, you're going to be obedient to Jesus Christ. You hear me? Make them obedient to Jesus Christ. They have to do what Jesus tells them to do. That's how we take them out of there. Get rid of them. We are in a spiritual battle, folks. Hear me on this. We are in a serious spiritual battle. We can't fight this battle in our own strength. 
We're, in, we're at war right now with an enemy, an adversary who hates us and will even pit us against each other. And this is not a new war. As I said in my last message, in the beginning, the, the beginning of the message, this war has been going on for thousands of years. It's nothing new. Our ancestors and everybody else, the old folk from uh, 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 the old, old Testament, they went through these battles. So it's, it's new for us because we're here. What's going on? It's nothing strange. It's been a battle for years. There are a number of ungodly philosophies that hold people bondage. And I believe that those are what's called spiritual fortresses. We can't knock them down. We need the armor of God, the Holy Spirit's power. And honestly, they need to be taken prisoner, taken captive, and completely demolished the systems of thought that war against us. And all those things will come against us if we don't have the full armor. All of them, they're arrogant obstacles, opposing opinions, sophisticated arguments, and some kind of proud thing folks try to come up with. And these are what the Apostle Paul was saying that prevent people from truly knowing God, knowing the truth. We got all these new things and new philosophies that's coming up now, and folks are falling for them. In our day, the system of the human thought include this theory of evolution, which is various cults. Even these various occults we're talking about, secular humanism, which is rejecting religious dogma and the false religions, all these new false religions that are coming out, they're popping up like, like, it's, like it's crazy, like some, something growing in your grass, weeds. And all you, all you guys know them. You know what they are. And the problem is, is people are falling for these things. Their mind is open and they're not wearing their full armor. They open up themselves to get connected. Their philosophy is twisting folks' minds into believing this stuff that they spew out their mouths and the people's minds are being so messed up in this stuff, just totally messed up. And then they're confused when they come back. And that's why I truly believe the apostle Paul told us, this is his letter, he told us in this letter here to the Corinthians, I believe that many people are held captive by these false philosophies. And I believe that many people are held captive by these false philosophies. And the question today, the question that I could ask you today is, how many spiritual prisoners labor under requirements of Allah and are waiting, are waiting for freedom in Jesus Christ? How many people, you think, how many people labor under the requirements of Buddha and are awaiting freedom in Jesus Christ? And again, I say we must, we must, and I mean we must take captive of these thoughts and make it, and I mean make it obedient to Jesus Christ. I like what Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus says in John 8 and 36. He says this, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We aren't under no law, we're under grace. If the Son comes and sets you free, you are confirmed really free, really free. And I believe that false religions and, and even secular thinking has imprisoned a lot of folks' minds. And not only false religions have taken, uh, taken folks' minds captive, but also if God gives us his instructions to do a certain something, we can't say anything like, well, some man or woman don't want me to do that. Listen, folks, if God has instructed us to, to go we need to go. If God instructed us to stop, we need to stop. We need to hear the voice of God. No man should tell us when to go here, when to go there. God gives us instructions of what to do. We must subject, we must subject every single thought to the obedience of Christ. And I believe that. I truly believe that. And I believe that there are millions of folks today that is allowed 
this secular philosophy stuff and false religions to just imprison their minds, just, just basically hold them hostage. And it's a sad thing that we, we allow all these thoughts to come into our mind and, 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 and we don't want to take down these negative thoughts or, or cast them down. We rather just entertain them. But God wants us to take captive of those thoughts, whatever it might be, whether it's philosophies, whether it's thoughts of I can't do, whatever it might be, we need to take them captive and we need to pull down strongholds. We need to take them captive and make them obedient to Jesus Christ. And folks, listen, that's why us Christians can't, uh, 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 all of us Christians, excuse me, that is why we all as Christians cannot fight this battle without the weapons of God. That is the full armor of God. We don't stand a chance without God on our side. There are many folks today that really need to take, uh, uh, need to, uh, to, need to take captive of those thoughts that are keeping them captive and holding all those, their mind and stuff, taking them prison, that's imprisoned their minds rather, and in turn, turn them over to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Uh, like 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, the Apostle Paul says this, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. In other words, Paul is simply telling us Satan is the God of this world. And he's blinded a lot of believers so that they cannot see the true light of the gospel. And the true gospel is what illuminates the glory of God, of Jesus Christ rather, who is the image of God. In closing, I just want to simply say this. We must tell everyone we can tell about the good news of Jesus Christ. We are engaged in a battle and Satan wants to mind and he wants to imprison and keep folks blind and fighting each other. When we need to remember 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. We just read that 10, 4 and 5. The weapons for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down of strongholds. You hear that? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, we can thank God for his weapons to fight this war. We can thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. We can thank God for Jesus of what he done for us on Calvary. We can thank God for his love, his mercy, and his amazing grace. We can thank God for saving an old wretched man like me and you. Thank God for sending his son to do what we could never do to pay our sin debt in full on the cross and accepting our punishment Thank God for offering us a new life he had bought for us. Thank God for our eternal life that is embodied in Jesus Christ. Thank God for giving us a guarantee that we will live forever with him in glory. We can thank God for spiritual rebirth in Jesus Christ. We can thank God for so much more all because of Jesus Christ's life, death, burial, and his resurrection. Listen, folks, we can cast out these negative thoughts with the power of God. We don't need to let false religions, we don't need to let anybody tell us you can't do it. We need to hear what Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can make do whatever God tells me to do. No matter if I don't see it with these eyes, we need to see it with the spiritual eyes. We have been given the victory through Christ Jesus. And just to recap all the, these things that I talked about in these negative thoughts, number one, pull down the strongholds. We know that strongholds can attack any one of us, but God's way of breaking down and pulling down these walls are the only way. We must use God's method. Pull down these walls in our minds. The walls of pride, greed, and pleasure. 
that invade our minds. We are to set out to conquer the world for Jesus Christ. Number two, put on God's armor. Put on God's armor. Every single one of us need God's suit of armor to do this battle that we're engaged in. We need to put on every single piece of God's armor. The belt, which is the truth. The breastplate, which is righteousness. The shoes, which is the readiness to share the good news. The shield, which is faith. The helmet, which is salvation. And the sword, which is the word of God. We need to be ready and we need to be ready to do battle. Without God's weapons, you've already lost the battle. God's weapons are the only ones that can pull, that pull down strongholds. And number three, number three, take captive to obey Jesus. Take the captive of these things. Take thoughts captive to obey Jesus. Why we do that, we are to take a prisoner, every single thought, emotion, and subdue them to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Come here. You're coming captive with me. I'm pulling you down, and I'm going to train you and mold you into Jesus Christ and not allow them to just uh, uh, make a home in our minds. Take them captive, subject them all thinking to the obedience of Jesus Christ and demolish any arguments that are against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So remember these three ways I shared with you. I thank God for each and every one of you for tuning in and watching us in our online worship service. I thank you so much for everything that you do for this ministry, your generosity to this ministry. I, I'm truly just, you're just awesome blessings to this ministry. Continue to give, please, and continue to pray for us. If there is one out there that have never accepted Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time you could do it right now, and you could do it right there where you are, right there where you are. If you want to accept Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I could do that with you. It's simple. It's not, it doesn't take a lot of time. It only takes maybe a less than a minute. But if you want to accept Christ as the personal Lord and Savior for your life, you can do it right now. It's the prayer of salvation or the sinner's prayer. And I could go over that with you right now. And we could just do it. Just simply bow your head, close your eyes, and you got to mean every word of these words here if you want Jesus in your life. Just simply bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Say, Lord God, I am a sinner. I am sorry for all my sins. I repent of my sins. Please have mercy on me, Lord, and save me right now. I believe that Jesus came, died, and rose again for my sins. I ask Jesus to come into my heart right now and be the Lord of my life. I ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. If you said that simple prayer right there, you are now a born again believer. If you said that prayer and truly mean it, you've confessed it and you believe it and you mean it in your heart that Jesus came, died and rose again for you, you are now a born again believer. Now what you can do is get you a good Bible. Start studying the word daily, regularly. And if you have a, a, a uh, iPhone or le electronic device, get that Bible app on there and have your Bible with you at all times, anywhere you go. Most people have their phones with them all the time. You can go in there, read it. You can go look at some resources and do some uh, daily devotionals and study at the same time. At least you have your word with you. Not only that, find you a good Bible teaching church in your area and start attending on a regular basis. Not hit once, twice, three times a year, but on a regular basis and get in a good Bible study as well. And not only that, uh, if you're in the area of Carson, California, uh, we have room for you here. We have room, we're closed right now, but we will be opening eventually. Uh, the Lord is, I believe the Lord will give me that date when we're gonna open, but when we do, we have room for you. We'd love to have you. But there's a number on the screen, you can leave your number, leave your name, first and last name, clearly in your number and someone will get back with you if you want to become a member here and listen continue to trust God because the enemy is relentless he's going to launch attacks he's going to try to uh, uh, discourage you but let God guide you stay focused 
surround yourself around good Christian folks that's going to encourage you, that's going to lift you, and that's going to disciple you, and watch what God will do in your life. Again, congratulations, and thank you all so much for joining us in our online service. We thank God for you and your gifts and your prayers. Please, we'll, join, we'll see you again next week, the Lord willing. God bless you all. God keep you. We'll see you then, Lord willing.